What's up, everybody? Gonna give a little time for people to come in. Let's go ahead and shoot this out. But this is the first live for Holy Grounds. I am very, very excited. Uh, hopefully you guys are excited as well. This has been a long time coming. Um, originally I had a guest lined up. Certain things didn't work out, but I am honored to have the guest that I have today, really. Um, we have become uh, very good friends through uh, the beard community. For you guys that don't know what the beard community is, for you to go, for you guys that watch this back that may not know about it, basically it's a community for the bearded guys. So um, I found out about it because I got into beard care, then started realizing that there's a lot of other guys out there that have Instagram and stuff like that. Do apologize now if you hear my son in the background. He saw all the equipment and he wanted to come out. But anyways, so yeah, when uh, I met with this gentleman online. Um, through the bearded community, it was really great to get to know him and get to meet him and get to just exchange overall uh, everything that is to do with beard care. But most importantly, what was great is the fact that he's a pastor. And I think that's really where we started to connect and bond. So before I get into more about who we are and how we met and all the other stuff, I am going to show you guys a quick intro. I do hope you guys like it. This was done by a friend of mine called Noah Baxter. He's a Christian artist. He's the one that came up with the music. So please enjoy and I'll be back with you guys. So yeah, that right there, that song that you heard in the background is a little snippet uh, that was created by Noah Baxter. Uh, you can find him on um, Instagram under official Baxter. Uh, it's spelled a little differently. So um, it's spelled B-X-K-E-R, I believe, or B, yeah, B-X-K-E-R, I believe is how he spells it. Um, but he's a great Christian artist, great. Uh, he does a lot of Christian rap, um, but um, we've really bonded over the word of God. And so he created that for me. That is part of his new uh, theme that he's going to go with, which is called lo-fi. So it's basically focusing on just sound, no um, words to it. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what he does with that going forward. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and add my guest to the screen. It is none other than Juan Cruz from Anointed Beard Co. Hey, what's going on, what's guys? What's going on, Juan? It's good to see Nothing, you, man. Welcome, man. <laughs> welcome, man. Welcome you in, man. Here, man. It's an honor. Definitely help you out with this. Oh. oh, of course, man. You know, when I thought of who would be my first guest, obviously, you were always in mind. Um, when initially I, I had asked Noah um, because I really wanted to support his music because he has this new venture, but you were always in my mind as well. So I, you know, God works in beautiful ways, man. We able to have you as the first guest, which I'm honored to have you as, you know, my first guest. Yeah, man. No, it's, it's likewise, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, whenever we get to come together, there's always, there's always magic that happens. So <laughs> <laughs> that is no, true. I'm well, sure. let's welcome in our first guest, Jason. He's a, a fellow, a friend of yours from uh, New York City. Um, remind me the full name of the church again. New York yeah, City, not New York City, but it, it's kind oh. of like they do. They do a spinoff on on SNL. They're from Fairfield, okay. Illinois. Uh, his name okay. is Jason Mason, Pastor J May. Uh, he has been uh, an awesome friend of mine, and I consider him, you know, more than that. Just he's just a brother. So uh, he he goes to NYLC, which is not your ordinary church. And they're definitely That's right. <laughs> not your ordinary church. So uh, grateful for Jason for joining in. Oh, yeah. Super grateful. Thank you, man, for coming in. Uh, I loved when you guys did your uh, collapse, which obviously we'll get into a little bit later. 
But yeah. first and foremost, let's talk about how we met. Obviously, we met in the beer community, which is really great. Um, you started your business over a year ago now, right? Yeah, man. It's uh, it's it's actually how, just how long has it been years. now? Yeah, it's been it's two been years two now. Years. But it's only been a year since I've been out in the community, about a year and a half or so. Got so. you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I remember when uh, you first started coming on Instagram, me, Ryan, and Zeb had just started the Bearded Pack. For you guys that don't remember that throwback. <laughs> but um, hey, we had just started that and, uh, you know, to help you release the company and, mm -hmm. and everything to see how much you've grown from that it has been amazing, honestly. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been a journey, and I think that's, uh, I know we'll get into more of that, of course, too. But, uh, you know, yeah. being an entrepreneur is not easy. It's it's definitely yeah. not. You know, I think we we look from it from from a, a perspective outside of there, and we kind of say, oh, I could do that. You know, I can make you know however much money you consider success. You know, and then you get into it, and you're like, there's a lot of nitty gritty that you don't really get to hear from. So. Uh, I, I hope yeah. I get to shed some light on that today, too. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, first and foremost, you know, not only are you a businessman, but you're a pastor. You know, you, yeah. you speak on the word of God. You're a, you're a firm believer. So let's go into that. How long have you been a believer, Ron, for those that don't know you and may come upon this podcast later on? Yeah, um, well, I've been I've been in the church my entire life. So I grew up uh, very very close to uh, my grandparents and my grandparents were, were uh, very strong believers in, in the faith. So I always went to church with them every Sunday. Um, my mom and <clears throat> my mom always was really pushing me to always stay in church because, you know, for her, if I stayed in church, then that means I was getting out of trouble or I wasn't getting into trouble. So I was yeah. always at the church. And, and then, you know, naturally you start to get involved. You know, you start to help out here and there. Uh, but I'm yeah. 28 years old, and I'd be lying if I said that uh, I stayed in church the entire time, that my life was perfect the entire time. Um, you know, just like everybody, you grow up. And it was around maybe, I was probably like 17 years old, and I just started getting really rebellious at that time. And for mm. about a year or two, I, I really stayed away from God. Like I didn't want anything to do with church and I went to church, but I didn't want to uh, do everything that God told me that I needed to do. So I was very rebellious uh, during that time mm -hmm. in my life. But then, you know, uh, later, later after that, like when I turned like 19 or 20, I recommitted my life to Christ and uh, I've been on that path ever since. So a big shout out to my wife, Liz, and uh, she really did put that, uh, that interest back into me where I would felt like, you know what, I need to give God a chance again because he didn't do anything wrong. So Amen. yeah, I've been a Christian my whole life, but as, as far as being like a firm believer and standing on the faith, it's probably only been like 10 years. Wow. Wow. Um, thank you for sharing that, man. I definitely want to just highlight this. So could, please guys go ahead and share this stream out so everybody can learn more about Wong or more about our faith. Go ahead and feel free to subscribe to the channel. But yeah, man, I, I think that's something that we always connected with when we first met was the whole, you know, um, coming back to understanding what the faith was all about. I mean, I know I talked to you a whole lot about what's happened in my life since um, I even got saved. Uh, I've been saved for now eight years, which is crazy. It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> it still seems like just the other day, like, you know, I heard the message Um but for myself, I always went to Catholic school. So, I mean, I knew about the Bible, but I never really, like, took it serious. Mm -hmm. And it was only when, like, you know, I, I think a lot of people can relate to it. Uh, at my brokenness, at my at my weakest moment is really where um, God showed up. And um, I realized that I needed him. Hey, what's going on, yeah. Van Tony? Welcome in, man. Thank you for coming in. Another great supporter up, of Anointed the Beer Code over there. Another on, great now. dude of the bearded community, man. And another uh, believer. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's important to understand where we kind of come from. Um, you know, you growing up in the church, um, you know, you did have that rebellious stage, which I think a lot of us, like I said, can really relate to. Hey, Liz. 
Welcome on in. Thank you for joining us. Um, but, you know, I think we can all understand that because even in the Bible, we see a lot of rebellion. We see a lot of rebellious people either that were in the that were in the body that were either, you know, part of something and then go their own way and then kind of realize, wait, I should have been staying there. Or then you see the rebellious person that had no idea then get transformed and put in a position that some would kind of just scratch your head. And a lot of people could resonate with Paul. That's one that was a, a rebellious man, a, a man that killed even believers and then comes to be a believer. Um, oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of Bible characters that we could just simply just start listing off. You know, but mm -hmm. for you, what what's a what's one person when you read? But obviously, outside of Jesus, we I, I think can all say mm -hmm. Jesus is the number one. But what's one character maybe that when you read them, you kind of go, man, that kind of resonates with me. What what would you say yeah. that person would be? Yeah, I think uh, it, yeah, it's, it's an easy go to, but you know, uh, I think every preacher's almost favorite character is David. You know, uh, mm. David was uh, someone that showed what it meant to grow up in a humble lifestyle, uh, was always treated like an outcast, never was uh, appreciated by even his own family. Even his brothers are like, oh, pick me, pick me to be the king. You, oh, you want the, my brother who's a shepherd boy? You don't want anything to do with that. And I resonated mm. a lot with that just because, you know, I always felt like the kid that was kind of like picked on or felt like the kid that nobody really wanted to you know, play with and stuff like that. And then as I progress, I kind of had my own David story and you just begin to grow up and, and you don't worry. You don't try to conform to the world. You can try to conform to the word. So you try to do mm. what God is asking you to do. And then in that process, you start realizing, well, God didn't want you to fit in on that type. Didn't want you to act a certain way. He wanted you to be exactly who you are, who you've been called to be. And then David became the king. David became the giant slayer. But David also was a man who sinned so hard and had such lust and temptation that he was willing to lose it all for a woman. And mm. that just shows you that he was very human as well. Uh, yeah. And in the same way he was human and messed up and had all this, he had this um, temptation and desire in his heart to get whatever he wanted at whatever cost, even if it meant causing someone's life to be ended, he still ends up being a man after God's own heart. Mm. So Amen. there's so many angles. You could look at David all the way from his, you know, young boyhood being a shepherd all the way to him being the king and arguably the greatest king of Israel. So yeah. I I really uh, appreciate the, uh, David's story and, uh, and yeah, taking that in. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, honestly, I think a lot of people go to David too. I think it's a, it's a good kind of reference for, for a lot of people. Well, first mm -hmm. of all, welcome in Damien, man. Thank you for joining us. Another <laughs> great uh, supporter of the beard community, as well as the faith, man. He's an amazing dude. Um, but yeah, Damien. myself, uh, I was kind of thinking about this. I was like, well, you know, if I really had to think about it, Paul speaks to me a lot because being a rebellious guy and I never try to kill anybody. Um, but in a way I kind of was because, you know, uh, I was killing myself by doing drugs and all those other things. So mm -hmm. really, you know, when I, when I look and right now we're going through Galatians at my church, my, my pastor does a deep study of each uh, chapter. He doesn't, you know, he, he kind of goes verse by verse. There's like five verses a Sunday and really kind of try to dive deep into what Paul is saying. So in Galatia, he's really speaking about how they are not to conform to the law anymore, that the law is not their justification. And so when I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm reading that, I'm like, well, I never was trying to justify myself by that law, but certainly by a certain type of law, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at it, um, really, um, if you don't realize it or not, if you're not living by the words of God, you really are trying to live by somebody else's laws or somebody else's beliefs. And so, yeah, Paul definitely resonates with me as, as someone that I see like, man, if God could turn that wretched guy and 
you know, give him a complete 180 to serve him, you know, how much more so, you know, he loves each and every one of us. So God has a purpose and plan for us all. So. Yeah, think, absolutely. You know, yeah, Paul's Paul's definitely one of those. Uh, well, he's one of those characters where you get you see somebody who's without the word of God in the terms of the world is a very intelligent person. Um, <clears throat> he studied in, in some of the greatest schools. He was around some of the best circles. He was well respected. Mm -hmm. He was high up in his position. And uh, to find somebody like that who is completely mm -hmm. counter opposite of what uh, you know, God was trying to protect and bring out, uh, ends up finding himself on the road to Damascus. Mm. And, uh, and so he, God, even with him learning all these things, he knew the law. He knew the law. Yet yeah. he, he was going completely against it, you know, in the terms of even, you know, going against God himself. So, yeah. God was preparing him even with his studies. God was preparing him uh, with knowing all these things. And then it just took it. He had to get blinded to come to that point. But <laughs> he gets to the yeah. area in his life where he says, you know, I can't keep doing this. You know, and he's really, you know, forsaking God and he's persecuting God. And then I love I love that verse. And it says, it says, then why do you persecute me? You know, why are you persecuting? Mm. You didn't even, he didn't even say my people. He says me. Like God makes it so yeah. personal. Like, why are you persecuting me? And I, you know, to hear the voice of God, and that's the one thing you hear. I mean, that better change you. So, yeah. uh, Paul, Paul really did a really amazing job at, uh, well, not even amazing job. God, the Holy Spirit did it work, but uh, yeah. him accepting it. And, you know, then he goes out to be, you know, the greatest, the greatest apostle in my book, you know, from just yeah. his life. So, and the thing is, Paul and, was so humble, he even says he's the least of these because he didn't yeah. walk with Christ. So, yeah. yeah that's what I was going to say. Like, honestly, one of the greatest things about it also is that he never personally, like, walked with him. He never mm -hmm. got to see the miracles. I'm sure he heard about him, but oh, yeah. the simple fact is that he didn't have the privileges that, like, James and John and, you know, uh, Peter had. Like these guys mm -hmm. walked with Jesus, got to see Jesus do miracles. And here's this guy. Um, and that's why we see that whole uh, in Romans, even uh, the whole debate on, on like who he is. But they still believe because they're seeing all this uh, transformation happening in the, all these great places. So, um, yeah, Paul, Paul definitely really got to flip the script on what it looked like to be a servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. Really, Absolutely. So, I mean, as a pastor, I'm sure I know you got a lot of these, pretty sure. And I know a lot of you guys in the chat probably have this too. So I, I want to hear everybody's on this as well. But your favorite Bible verse. Yeah. Obviously, you Bible. know, there's a, I was going to say, there's a lot of well-known ones out there. So I would like to just open this up, you know, get get a little creative. Don't just go to the go-to guys. But yeah, go ahead. What you were going to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what, man? I uh, my favorite verse. It's more personal than anything, um, but uh, it's a uh, it's Jesus wept. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say, hey, man, hey, that's cool. Well, well no. first of all, before you say it, let's that's welcome true. in uh, my brother Brad uh, Mech Media over here, who does uh, humble uh, broadcasting with uh, oh, Chad. Chad. Chad, yeah. Yeah. Chad and uh Scott. I was trying uh -huh. to remember the other one's name. Uh they yeah. do humble uh humble uh humble broadcasting on Sundays yeah. together. Uh, amazing channel. I've really enjoyed um what they're doing as well, you know, doing Bible verses, uh doing Bible studies. Uh it's also great to just be another channel that kind of just steps out there and starts being a channel of faith. So welcome yeah. in Chad, man. Yeah, but like my favorite verse, like my my real favorite verse is Isaiah 40, 31. And it says this, mm. but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Uh, that's my favorite verse. And that verse got my grandpa literally all through 
uh, his the end of, the ending days of his life. Uh, my grandpa was really a sick person, and uh, he had cancer, congestive heart failure. I mean, you name it. He had a ton of things that were wrong with him. But one thing that did not, uh, the one thing that he didn't lose was his faith. You know, he he lost body mass, blood cells. You know, you name it. But he didn't lose his faith. And that was the verse yes. that he always would repeat over and over and over again. So that to me is, is a favorite verse of mine because it reminds me even when I'm going through the struggle and I'm walking this walk of righteousness that God has called me to do and, and to love people, even when I it people are, aren't quote unquote deserving of it, uh, I have to mm. keep walking forward. You know, I have to keep walking forward because I also am not worthy of love from God. Um, and yet here we are. You know, and then, but yeah, that's my favorite verse. Well, I wanted to open up the actual word so I don't misquote anything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my exactly. favorite, mo most recently, uh, because uh, my uh, as we're going through Galatia, um, oh, there it is, humble, ne humble brothers network. That is that is it. Yeah, that's an amazing um channel. I know, uh, I believe Scott has always been a believer, if I'm correct, but. Um, Chad recently um, accepted Jesus into his life and so this has been a real amazing journey to see them both go through together as brothers you know I can really see um, they're beyond friendship now at that point so amen Scott thank you for sharing that man seriously um, but my most recent one that has really shaped who I am and my understanding has been Hebrews 12 one through uh Four, and mm -hmm. so it says, uh, therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily, easily entangles us, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, the, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who, ha who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. Amen. So, Hey, what's going on, uh, Matt? <laughs> my, my local brother from Bay Area over here, representing Florida. I definitely will highlight you guys' verses in a second, but I really wanted to dive into why this verse specifically, because for me, and I'll be fully transparent, I suffered a lot with sexual sin uh, because of what I went through as a child and all the stuff that I did as a teenager. And recently is when I realized that for me to consider myself a man of God, for me to consider myself a, a good husband, I cannot let that dominate me anymore. And so reading this, I, I see that for one, the church is always supposed to be an encouragement that we shouldn't want to sin. And so when we're surrounded by that great call of witnesses, which for a while I wasn't able to go to church and be able to fellowship and be encouraged like in person besides over the phone, it was, it's hard, you know, sometimes you do slip and fall. And so reading this, it showed me that, look at all that Jesus has done. He, he joyfully took on the cross, which a lot of times we don't hear that. He joyfully <laughs> took it on so we could be set free. And so really this race that we run in this world is like my pastor said, it's not a marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So we have to have endurance. And so at times we will grow weary at times. It will be tough. But when we have that encouragement that surrounds us, uh, it will give us the strength to be able to say, you know what? No more. God, you know what? Here this is. I need you to, to strengthen me. I need you to, to take this away from me because without you, I'm going to keep giving into it. So. It really, it, that really was the thing that drove me to say, you know what, well, I, I want to head first. 
at first yeah. of everything that I do. That's why this channel is even starting now because I said, I want to serve God the best way I can. And how did I know how to do that was something I kind of already knew how to do, which was uh, going live on YouTube. <laughs> so Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> but now Liz with, R now said. With even, now with an even stronger yeah. story, you know? Yeah. Um, like, don't get me wrong. I love, I love making beard products. I think that it is one of the funnest hobbies turned to business that I, I probably could ever think of. Um, I enjoy yeah. working with New Sense. I enjoy people's reactions and the reviews, and, and I love all of it. Um, but that, that even with that, can bring temporary joy. You know, like the, there's yeah. nothing that gives me more passion and more joy than the things of God. So that, for me, that that just shows like you know, uh, all those carnal things that we we search for and we look for. You know what I mean? Like they're they're temporary things out of everything else. Um, but when you're really focusing on what's going to take you, you know, further, what's going to help you finish the race, give you endurance. It's not my beard care sales. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> my, the joy that I have in the Lord every single morning. So, um, Amen. But yeah, dude, I, I definitely hear you on that. That's so Liz said Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Amen. That's a uh, right there. You could see You know, I know we both have been through situations where it's just felt like what is going on, man. But, you know, praise be to God that we have um, the spirit. Amen. Matt said the Shema is tough to be Deuteronomy 6, 4. Oh, Matt going to Old Testament over here. Love it. But yeah, um, I you know I I really I love how I mean I'm glad Matt is here because you know I was gonna I was gonna bring up Matt after this, but just a simple fact that there are those companies out there like yourself and Matt who, again, you know, um, you do 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 have a business of beard care. You do have a business that you know you're trying to make some sort of income it's not it's, it's a passive income it's not your main income but really and and this is not to knock any other beard company that may watch this later i'm not trying to say that they're not doing their best to sell either because i'm sure there's companies out there that do great sales and i know there are but i don't want to name any and kind of start like a whole debate but it's just that for someone like you and matt i see the um strive to really go the extra mile to make sure that whatever you're doing draws back to your faith. Now I know Matt does have some Florida based stuff, which is cool. Um, but a lot of times Matt does try to do the biblical sense, which is awesome. Uh, and you yourself mainly do only biblical sense. Um, so I think it's really great because you get to see your creativity is something that's just written in words. You know, you you for a moment have to get inspired by the Holy Spirit as well as inspired by yourself to say, you know what, I want to make, so for example, I'm going to bring this up now since I have them all here. I'm going to make the fall. I'm going to make something that represents Genesis and put it in a bottle. Um, you know, I'm going to take something that represents the Holy Spirit as being a peacemaker something uplifting and put that as a set. And then most of all, one of my go-to favorites, saved and not shaved, the man that was wretched and wicked, and now he is saved. To, mm -hmm. to take those things and to apply it to something as simple as, you know, beard oil, not many people go, well, what's the big deal? But it really is taking that next step to say, well, it's not just about uh, facial care. It's not just about uh, those things. It's also about spiritual care. And that's the thing I see from you guys. And that's one of the many reasons why I've been a great supporter of yours and Matt since I even came down here. It's great to be able to hang out with him. But uh, just like I said, that extra mile you both go. Yeah, I think like with, uh, I, th I think I see it the most whenever I go to like a trade show or something like that, or I have a vendor event. What's funny is that People are going through all the scents, and I'm like, okay, uh, do you have anything uh, citrusy? Oh, yeah, I have the Centurion right here. This is blood orange and cedar, 
and that's actually one of my my top scents that I sell. And and they're like, oh, that smells great. What's a centurion? You know, why why the centurion? And that gives me an opportunity to share the word of God. And it says, well, you know, the centurion, you know, was a was a high ranking Roman soldier, but specifically, like it's talked about in the word of God that that there was a centurion that has more faith than anyone that Jesus has seen, even all all of Israel. I said, and that just makes me want to have faith like that, you know. So it's an uplifting scent, uh, you know, blood orange and cypress. Like those are all very Roman countryside type of scents that come together. And I, I get to explain that. Then what's cool is that, you know, what, whatever scent it is that brings me back, I get to talk about the word of God. And then on top of that, are you a Christian company? Are you, are you a Christian? Yeah. Then we get to have conversation. People just gravitate towards that or they now have something to you know, take home more than just a beard oil, you know, and I think that's really Amen. cool. Um, but, but yeah, you know, they, I think that I, I can tell you this, there are a lot of, uh, Christ followers that are in, that are owners in the beard community. Um, but it's just be, I put it this way and I don't want to clarify something. Okay. Um, there are a lot of really good owners out there that yeah. are believers in Christ, but they just don't put it in their products. And that doesn't mean that yeah. they're more or less of a believer than I am or Matt or anybody that, you know, makes a Christian based product. Right. Yeah. Um, because I can tell you some really awesome owners that have helped me and talked to me and have given me mentorship. Um, and they have mm. no <laughs> sense or anything. They even would think that they're, you know, a believer. So, I just want to say that there are a lot of really good companies out there and uh, you just get to see them, you know, hands on. I just chose right out the gate because, I mean, I could have done anything. You know, I could have chose a very and like for me, it just felt very selfish and in and, and my position in my life. Um, so I was just like, well, God, if this is what you want me to do, you tell me to seek your kingdom first and then everything else will be given to me. So I need to put that in what I'm doing. So no. if it's not glorifying him, like, I don't want a part of it. Yeah. So that that's really just what I chose. But that doesn't make, like I'm saying, that doesn't make any of the other believers that are business owners, yeah. you know, any more or less you know, than what I'm doing. Because they have a really solid spiritual, personal life with Christ. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Hey, what's up, uh, Luna? Hey, I appreciate up, that, man. man. <laughs> it's good to, good see, to see you see here. You um but yeah i mean that's that's true too because there are a lot of owners that i know as well and they they are believers and you, you wouldn't yeah. even think of it and that's true i did not i wasn't thinking of those guys but i was just thinking in a general sense but that's yeah, true yeah, for sure. yeah um i think i think it's important when you know that i mean like i said i i i, I like it that there is that like you said that tie so like if somebody comes to your shop it's just that extra step, you know, mm -hmm. whereas this other person, again, not saying that they're not, but you wouldn't know beyond there unless you got to know them personally, which sometimes a lot of consumers don't, I think, get to know an owner in person. I think nowadays, maybe it might be easier with IG and everything like that, like how we've gotten to know each other personally. Mm -hmm. Never met day in our life. Hopefully we will one day, but, oh, yeah. you know, we have a personal friendship outside of everything and it just the one cornerstone i i have come to know that while we're awesome friends is not is not the beard stuff is the faith stuff because every time i've needed prayer or guidance you've been the first person i've texted and you'll be like hey is everything okay do you need me to pray for you like sometimes you won't even text me you'll just call me you'll be like is everything okay and i'm like <laughs> oh oh it's like it, it's just like at the drop of a hat and it just it, it just goes to show like what kind of man you are and and i know matt has been like that to me as well uh homeboy lives like five minutes away from me and i'll order something he'll be like hey um be ready i'm outside and i'm like what i'm like okay <laughs> but it just you know it just goes to show that uh that love and support that you guys try to put forth with uh being uh christian based business owners yeah but so absolutely. what's what's something as that entrepreneur that you're looking forward to possibly doing going forward you know like 
What's what's one thing that you kind of say like, you know what? This might be my next step. I know you got a YouTube channel, which is great. Yeah, I need you know, to start working that... on putting content out. <laughs> 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 That's what I need to do. Hint, hint. Hint, hint, guys. You got to subscribe yeah. if you aren't already. <laughs> yeah. it's gonna, it'll, but, um, be cool. you know, what's what's one thing that you're looking forward to working on? Um, Well, you know, I like I said, I, I enjoy the beard care and, you know, doing that. And I'm, I'm at a point in my business with that specifically where um, I just have a really sustained main line. And then I want you to see, like, what comes out of it. So I probably will only have, like, a few, like, special releases or products like going out in the future but um i want to just scale this up and then worry focus on my next ventures and you know honestly like i'm i'm asking god what that is uh you know i'm yeah. i'm asking the lord like what the next steps are you know i i would love to have a non for profit like you know if i could leave everything right now tomorrow and know that everything was okay and just help the underprivileged communities um and talk to you know, people help people, you know, care for people that are on the streets. Like I have such a heart for homelessness um, and I don't necessarily know why, but God put that mm. burden in my heart. So I, it, it's yeah. kind of like, it's one of those things that you don't uh, like, you don't stop thinking about it. And that's when I know, like God's putting that on your heart. Uh, Cause even like this business, this business took me about a year and a half of fighting God. Like, I, why do I want to do a beard care business? Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I, but he's like, no, you have to do that. Like, that's part of everything. And and yeah. it's really amazing the types of conversations I've had in the DMs with people that they would have never talked to me if I didn't sell them a beard care product. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm really just at this point in my life where I'm just kind of asking the Lord, where where do you want me to go? And what do you want me to do? And do I trust you enough for the results? And that's mm. kind of where I'm at. So I, I love what I'm doing ministry wise. Right now, I'm taking care of kids and youth. So my position at my church is called a uh, student ministries pastor or director. And uh, I I just do basically everything. <laughs> so and if you are in ministry and you're listening to this or, you know, have, or volunteer at a church, uh, you know that those things uh, can be very um very, you know, it can it can take a lot of your time. It can be burdensome. So yeah, uh, I want I want I basically watch over two ministries, but I help with media. I help with, you know, I I'm preaching this Sunday. You know what I mean? Like there's just things you have to do to continue make every make sure everything's working fine. And uh, mm. I'm just asking the Lord, what's the next steps? You know, I I'm just Man. right now I'm just kind of trusting that everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Man. Well. I definitely uh, probably going to draw this to the close pretty soon. Uh, these podcasts probably will be like around 30 to 45 minutes. So I really, you know, do appreciate having you as my first guest. Honestly, man, I think for a lot of people that may come back and watch us later on, are going to see, uh, you know, what this is all about. You know, this is about sharing the faith. This is about not only connecting with someone that is a business owner, but just a, a firm believer. So, before we go, uh, I definitely want to open it up to, you know, any word of encouragement that you want to leave with the watchers now and then eventually the future, like so, uh, something that, you know, just be led by God, you know, to give them a, a verse that, that will encourage them going forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing, if you're, if you're, if you have a business on your heart, start it. If, if, I'll give you the entrepreneur uh encouragement first so if you want if you have a business on your heart start it it's because if you think about it all the time if it doesn't leave your head it's because god wants you to start it um and you have to trust him that it's going to happen and work out for your good and the word of god says that everything works out for his good not your good for his good it, it's, it's it has to work out for his plan it has to work out for his will in your life so he wants those things to be for you, but you, it has to be according to his will. So I would say if you have that thought in your mind, put it in prayer. Ask God, like, Lord, do you really want me to do that? Do you, Is that really what you want? And most of the time he's already answered it. He's just waiting for you to move. <laughs> so uh, I would encourage you, if you have a business on your heart, I, I have my, I'm a firm believer that everyone has something they can market. 
Everyone is marketable. Mm -hmm. You just have to figure out what that is. So you can start a business. You can start a YouTube channel. You can start that podcast you've been sitting on. Just do it. Just start. And if it doesn't work out, if it bores you, then at least you gave it a try. But start because then you, you never know what you're missing out on. Um, as far as, um, you know, the thing, as far as your walk with Christ, uh, don't give up on him because he never gave up on you. No, no. Don't, don't give up on Christ. Um, things are going to get tough. And Jesus promised that. Like he, he overcame the world because he knew that things were going to be tough for you as a believer. So it's not a surprise. <laughs> Just keep mm -hmm. reading. He, he's literally telling you things are going to get tough, but that doesn't mean that you have to give up on him. Um, so yeah. I I can pray for you guys. And if you'd like me to, I feel led to pray. And then we can close this out if you if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, before you do, I definitely wanted to end it with, you know, obviously in the scripture of Matthew, where Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy, burdened, and laden. And yeah. I will give you rest. Uh, Jesus is our rest. And for anybody that comes and watches this that isn't a believer, uh, feel free to IG message me, IG message Juan. We're here to answer your questions. Um, we're here to help you understand what the word of God truly means. This is why I'm doing this podcast, because I felt led by the Lord to share the word of God, to clearly preach the word of God. And um, really just go above and beyond and show who God is. Hey, Ellie, how you doing? Um, but really just clarify what the Word of God says and preach directly from the Word of God. Not my ideas, not my understanding, but just what the Word of God says. And that's it. So, um, man, of course, man, please end this in prayer. Go ahead and close this out. That's always welcome here. That is what this yeah. channel is about. Uh, firm believers and so yeah my right, dad definitely so father god lord i just thank you once again for this opportunity to uh to share your word to share your goodness with those that are around us and god i thank you for jp for uh being obedient lord and starting this channel back up and and starting to use his platform lord to share your word and share your truth and share your spirit so god i ask you lord that every single person that comes in contact with this uh, with this podcast, with this video, uh, Father, that they would be encouraged. They'd be encouraged to keep going forward. They'd be encouraged to do your will. They'd be encouraged to serve you and to love you and 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 to to look to do love others, to love others, to do the great commission. God, that they would you would help us, Lord, to to create and make disciples of all nations and baptize them by your holy name. So, Lord, we thank you today because we want to live in that truth and we want to be a part of that truth. Guide us, strengthen us, renew our faith, renew our joy, because Lord, you are truly in control and we don't want to be in control. There's too much stress, God. There's too much anxiety that comes with that, Father, but we want you to be in control of our lives. So we thank you today. We give you glory and honor and we say all of this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I'm hearing the racket in the back. I was wondering what Jacob was up to. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but um, no, I really appreciate having you on. Hey, uh, Dave. Uh, welcome in, man. Appreciate you guys for coming in today. Seriously, uh, this was awesome to do my first podcast. This is something that I plan to do monthly, guys. Um, so definitely look forward to next month's podcast. Look forward to continuing the vlog series. It's been amazing to be able to share with you guys out of the word of God, a little bit about who I am and just connect. So I'm going to leave you guys with the outro. This will be it for today. And I definitely look forward to seeing you guys soon. So God bless you guys. Yeah. Sorry, man. I'm not going to say your other name here on live. <laughs> All right. Here is the outro guys. And have a wonderful rest of your day.